Hello, hello, more demons here and welcome to the sixth round of Tata Steel 2021 chess tournament played in Wegenzy uh, in Netherlands. This is Chess Wimbledon, one of the most important, maybe the most important tournament of the year. Um, candidates, uh, of course, are more important, uh, but this is also a very, very important tournament and this is 83rd edition. Uh, and I would like to show you the game of the world champion in the round six, so Magnus Carlsen, with the black pieces plays against Polish number one Jan Krzysztof Duda who opened with e4 against Magnus Carlsen so we have e5 knight f3 knight c6 bishop c4 so we're gonna have some kind of Italian game knight f6 invitation for the fried liver attack but Jan Krzysztof Duda of course didn't go for that he goes more traditional systems we have d3 bishop c5 and now we have the castle we we have d6 so symmetrical answer and now c3 now c3 is a very typical here it prepares in the future d4 and of course not yet uh, however it's preparing but also making a space for the light square bishop so in the right moment the light square bishop um, can be moved for example to c2 uh, and now the main line is a6 however Magnus Carlsen went for a5 there are a couple of systems and couple of ideas in Italian game which both of the players of course know uh, and it looks like okay if you know all the ideas then it should be easy to play this opening is at least you know 400 maybe 500 years old and it was played thousands of times hundreds of thousands of times however even the super grandmasters have to think which variation to choose and which ideas to play in what order because the outcome of that can be really really um, different so here we have a5 and now we have rook e1 rook e1 taking care of the e4 so first before you push this d4 you have to take care of the of the pawn on e4 and now we have the castle and i would like to show you the picture so uh, here we go this is exactly this position and jan krzysztof duda is thinking because now he is going to play knight b2 d2 so that was the move and now magnus carlsen has a lot of options so the main idea for example is bishop b6 challenging the bishop this bishop can go to b5 that's the one of the ideas and what black can do is a very interesting maneuver queen b8 uh, and after a knight f1 queen a7 focusing on f2 so you see it's a very very important to know what you are doing because if you are late one move only you can be in the big trouble so for example also this knight is a very dangerous because it also can point on f2 uh, in this position bishop uh, e3 is the is the main idea and now of course it's too late to play that because uh, this bishop can be taken so in this case bishop e3 then knight e3 knight e7 then this knight is going to the to the f6 and then to f4 as there is no dark square bishop so uh, this is just one of the ideas also if black decided not to play for example h6 then there is possibility of playing some craziness like knight g4 attacking the pawn on f2 it looks like very very dangerous but after rook e2 king h8 black are ready to play some a sharp variation like the f5 and white have to be very careful h3 uh, believe me or not but okay the main idea here of course is the knight h6 but it's possible even to play f5 immediately the king h8 of course because of the pin so the the pawn couldn't move but now f5 and what you're gonna do uh, we have one game in the database very sharp where white took the pawn and the game continued however i would like to just show you what could happen if the knight is taken so f takes on g4 and now this knight is under attack and doesn't have a good moves to go uh, if for example example knight e1 then queen f6 and look at this uh, a lot of pressure on f2 it cannot be defended anymore so d4 have to be played but then g3 still attacking this this pawn if this pawn is pushed then the knight gonna take on d4 and this bishop gonna be extremely strong on the diagonal so just you know some ideas here what you could play is d takes on c5 allow actually this uh, g takes on f2 and after rook f2 uh, queen f2 king h1 
I will just tell you, the engine says this is equal and you can play it and there are a lot of lines you can play. A black have uh, maybe some advantage, visual advantage because of this open H file, so it's extremely dangerous. Uh, however, black also didn't develop these pieces and it's not that easy to develop these pieces. So white can have a time to consolidate the position and and continue the game. But definitely this is this is very very uh, sharp line. Uh, Bishop a7, Magnus Carlsen plays solid. Now Bishop a7 indicates that the queen will not come to a7, um, so the bishop stays over there. Why to move this bishop? Because white in the right moment, if playing d4, uh, could come with the tempo, and so this can be unpleasant. So better to play something like that. We have knight f1, Jan Krzysztof Duda went for knight f1, this is the, the main idea, this knight gonna jump to g3, sometimes very rare to, um, it's it's very good to control also e3, like in the variation which I just show you, uh, but now it's uh, Magnus Carlsen who first challenged the bishop. So we have bishop b5, now knight e7, so the bishop is shooting nowhere, uh, and here we have one game, in the database where Jan Krzysztof Duda played this game, but with the black pieces against Wesley So, and Wesley immediately jumped for the d4. And then after knight g6, knight g3, so very typical idea, he went for, for c3, uh, bishop d3, and then after a4, gaining more space here, uh, and h3, taking away this g4 square, and then we had b5, and so on. And Wesley so won that game, however, it was quite long, it's not like, you know, white stands better here, black also have a pretty solid position here. So this is, this is well known. Uh, here, Jan Krzysztof Duda went for knight g3 immediately, we have knight g6, and now with the d4 move, um, Jan Krzysztof Duda had the chance to transpose to the same continuation which Wesley so played against him, but he chose to play h3. Uh, it looks like, you know, it's the same idea. Uh, of course, very typical in the Italian game, this pawn uh, controls g4, so it's very natural, also making a space for the king if needed, but there is the one problem with this. This knight is in danger, and it doesn't look like it's in danger, of course. However, look what Magnus Carlsen did in this position. It's a very, very precise. Now Magnus Carlsen is going to catch the initiative only because this little h3 move. It's a waiting move, it looks like a good move. It follows the Italian game principles. However, we have c6 kicking the bishop, bishop a4, and now d5. And now it's Magnus Carlsen who strikes in the center first. E takes on d5, knight takes on d5, and now we have one game in the database where this bishop was remaneuvered to, to c2 immediately. It looks like a very strong idea, one of the best in the game, uh, but Nils Grandelius lost this to Grandmaster half Honisian. Uh, so, you know, um, Nils Grandelius is usually very well prepared, but he lost the game like this one not long time ago. So, uh, Jan Krzysztof Duda counter strike in the center, we have d4, e takes on d4, knight takes on d4, so it looks like everything is symmetrical, what can go wrong, and now Magnus Carlsen, queen c7, and Magnus still have 1 hour 25 minutes on the clock, uh, so maybe it's kind of his preparation, uh, or he just knows and see all of that, but what happened? After this move, c6, d4, the center open, and now look at this, the queen is watching at this knight. I told you this knight without the protection of the h2 pawn and uh, together with this bishop on this diagonal it looks you know very very shaky so for example I would like to just point that you cannot just take and win the pawn here. The problem is bishop f2 first with the check with attack on the knight on the rook uh, if you take it then you're gonna get another check here, and after king g1, the queen wins this uh, this knight and wins the game. The material is um, almost equal, however, it's overwhelming, and uh, the position of the king is completely compromised, and black gonna win the game pretty easily. So you just cannot play that. Uh, rook e6 first, you would say, okay, now we're gonna make some fork. It's even worse, because now, after f takes on e6, uh, after f takes on e6, uh, white even cannot play this 
this one because um, the queen immediately can strike to g3 and even if you take the rook then this this is just losing knight h4 the queen of course still cannot be taken because of this beautiful pin a uh, queen g4 otherwise you're gonna get checkmated on g2 but uh, this way or another you're gonna get checkmated queen f2 king h2 queen g1 and at the end you're gonna be checkmated this way as the knight controls also f4 and this knight controls um, f3 crazy stuff but you have to be extremely careful what to play here so Jan Krzysztof Duda really really have to be very very careful he chose to um, to play queen f3 uh, which defends the knight which also keeps an eye on the f2 the problem with this move is that the queen doesn't um, control the knight on d4 now and this is what magnus carlsen um, did right now he sacrificed his pair of bishops for all of the initiative now young Krzysztof duda is going to have this isolated pawn but no counterplay magnus carlsen seems like now he stands um, slightly better and now he immediately goes for this pawn and also watching on b2 so you cannot just bring the the bishop because this pawn on b2 is hanging you cannot play anything like you know b3 because your bishop is still on a4 and it was stuck over there if the queen moves and then, then b5 wins this bishop so the position starts to be very very shaky rook d1 for now defending saying okay magnus what are you gonna play now we have um, rook a to d8 now focusing um still on the this on this semi-open file and blocking the pawn the pawn is blocked the knight gonna move and then this pawn gonna collapse so young Krzysztof Duda has to do something about that he played bishop b3 uh, and now we have knight c7 asking okay you want to exchange the bishops I'm happy to do that uh, because then I will have even more pressure on your pawn on d4 However, Jan Krzysztof Duda uh, doesn't want to, you know, just lose, slowly collapse his position. He want to make, create some new opportunities. So he played knight f5. Now, knight f5 is uh, one of the principles of the, uh, of the Italian game. However, only if the knight is supported with the pawn on e4. There are no e pawns anymore. So both of the sides cannot easily bring the knights, you know, from g6 from g3 uh, but here we have that move now what to do this knight it looks like very very dangerous it's not only defending the pawn but also keep an eye on h4 which is going to be very very important um, move because now for example h4 h5 is possible before h4 was not possible because of course the knight could take it but now why not and now magnus has to make decisions so take the knight or not it looks like okay i'm gonna take the knight and then after queen f5 this pawn uh, is free to take however after rook d4 you have to calculate something like bishop e3 and bishop e3 would be winning for white because now yes there is rook d1 rook d1 uh, and the queen can be moved for example to b5 try to exchange the the queens however the point is that after bishop c5 uh, attack on the rook the rook they have to move or give up the exchange uh, and there is also attack on them on the f7 so if the rook is moved that that's the problem so that's the first thing so after queen f5 black would have to play something like knight d5 blocking the position and now how to get that pawn how to get that pawn white um, gonna have a time to consolidate the position and so on so these are this is the problem so this is why magnus carlsen doubled the pawns uh, on the b file but there is another problem because the rook is now start to be alive so the, the rook was in the corner but now can play on the a file you know can be lifted maybe to to a4 maybe can focus even on this pawn so magnus have to consider this now this knight is a monster knight and, and it can be very very annoying very very dangerous as well there are some ideas together with the with the dark square bishop of sacrificing maybe on on g7 
7, maybe on h6. So black have to be very careful and it's not easy to actually remove the knight. So for example, rook d5 and queen b5 and trying to uh, remove what could happen. Maybe h4, then h5, so probably h5, and then bishop d2. Uh, so, you know, if the queen comes to the to the b5, then the rook can take um, on the a5, and white stands really good, winning the game actually. So probably knight e6 would have to be played, uh, but then white consolidate bishop c3, and now uh, the knight can move, for example, to e3 and so on. So a queen b5 is not really possible after. This is why we have queen b5 first uh, and now we have h4. So Jan Krzysztof Duda tries to play as fast as possible. h4, h5 can be very unpleasant. Jan Krzysztof Duda, 20 minutes on his clock and Magnus Carlsen still 52 minutes, 32 minutes more. Huge difference. Uh, and this is only the move 23rd. So still Jan Krzysztof Duda has to make another 17 moves to time control to get another 50 uh, minutes. Magnus Carlsen goes for h5 first. So he is afraid of this pawn and um, going to h5. So obvious move, but saying also, okay, um, if you want, you can now take the pawn. Of course, this is the trap. So if you are low on time, you cannot, you know, just take the pawn when world champion, you know, want to give it for free, uh, because then Magnus would have this plan with the rook d5, attacking the, the knight, the knight cannot move because it's pinned to the queen, so uh, something like g4, the g4 now, the problem is that the queen doesn't control all of these light squares here, so queen e2, infiltrating the position, now the rook is under attack, um, so probably connecting the rook would be the best idea, however, black have a very beautiful attack now, queen f3, let's say, king h2, rook e8, the rook can come, uh, can attack g4, and uh, this is one of the ideas, the knight also uh, can come and together with another uh, knight jump, attack the queen, where the queen would move here uh, from this position, it's a very very tricky position, there would be some, some checkmate here on g2 and so on, very very unpleasant position, better to play something more solid, and indeed, uh, Jan Krzysztof Duda went for bishop d2. Now, this is the idea of Magnus Carlsen. Instead of first playing rook d5, he went for a queen b5 first, making also a space for the move b6. Of course, now rook d5 is not that at attractive. Actually, he's losing because of the rook a5. And now you cannot just exchange the queens this way. It would work uh, if, if, if everything happens this way. But of course, it's not the only way to continue. Now the rook can um, go to d3, let's say. Uh, rook c7, the material is uh, more or less equal. Uh, but uh, it's difficult to imagine that this, this could happen. You know why? Because after rook f5, white has much stronger move, and I hope you see that already. The rook can be taken by the queen, and now if the queen want to exchange, then the rook gonna take it, and of course, white gonna have extra exchange and gonna win the game. So that's not possible. This is why we have b6, so now making the, the move with the queen first was very important, and just to have, have the opportunity to defend the, the pawn on a5. And now, once making the weakness on c6, now look at this, the queen is watching, so we can imagine that the rook can come here and, for example, attack the pawn on c6. However, uh, Jan Krzysztof Duda uh, see that this is too slow. That would be too slow because the knight gonna jump here, the rook gonna come also to the d5, so all of that would be too slow. This is why in this position he goes for bishop g5, asking Magnus, what are you gonna play now? You gonna go for rook d5? Now my knight can go to e3. So now it turns that this pawn on h4 not only, you know, uh, was a threat to h5, but also gave the very beautiful outpost for the for the bishop. So that was completely possible and now the, the rook would have to go back and so on. So this is why Magnus said, okay, I don't have time for that f6 and now do something with your bishop. Where you're gonna move your bishop, you have to move it back uh, to bishop e3, bishop c, um, c1 it doesn't look good but this is exactly the plan
son of Jan Krzysztof Duda. Look at this. Bishop h6 saying, okay, Magnus, you played f6, so now your knight doesn't have the protection. So can this bishop be taken? Actually, no, because this is the, the trap. Now, Jan Krzysztof Duda uh, set up the trap on um, world champion. Of course, world champion didn't take the bishop. If that happened, then we would have queen h5, which is completely winning for white, because what to do with the knight? If the knight goes for example f4 let's do some active move you know attacking the queen uh, simply queen g4 winning the knight so that's not even possible and now now knight h8 you already see that it's not gonna end up good with the queen g4 king f7 now the queen gonna come to g7 and this king gonna run around rook e1 and now where are you gonna go uh, you have two options and I'm not sure which one is, is, is worst. King f5, let's say, then you're gonna get g4, king f4. Your king is on the f4. You have two extra knights, uh, but they cannot help you. You're gonna get checkmated pretty soon. So that's also not the, not the idea. King h7, of course, you're gonna get checkmated very fast. So also not possible. King f7, probably the best out of all of this. Uh, but still, knight h6, winning back the material. And the best what black can do is try to actually uh, run somewhere over there. But uh, but still, queen g6, king d7, and now, uh, for example, b4. And now black have to decide what you're going to do. If you take the pawn, then you, we're going to have the open file. The king will never be safe over there. From the other hand, if black decide to push the pawn, then maybe we'll never escape to c8 because, for example, of queen g4 and black gonna have the troubles as the queen would control all of the squares so uh, probably king c8 but then opening the position and that's the best what black could get but this is completely winning uh, for white this position is completely winning for for white so not this way Rook f7, of course, Magnus Carlsen, see all of that, he cannot take the take the bishop and now immediately we have queen h5 Jan Krzysztof Duda, only 5 minutes on his clock, Magnus Carlsen, 31, very comfortable game. Uh, and now the knight doesn't have protection, not much can be done here. So we have knight e7, knight e7, rook e7, and now queen b5. Jan Krzysztof Duda was thinking to his limit is the 29th move, so he still will have to make, you know, another 11 move to time control, and he decided in the last seconds that exchanging the queens it makes a lot of sense. So we have c takes on b5 and we're gonna have this end game where Jan Krzysztof Duda plays on his incrementation. Just reminder, he has 30 seconds. Each move he has 30 seconds and this is all the time he has. So every time he makes the move, he gonna get the new 30 seconds. Now the bishop is under attack, so we have to have a bishop d2. And now rook d4, um, if Magnus plays rook d4, and that's actually bishop e3 now. And uh, what to do? If we gonna take the pawn on h4, then this pawn gonna collapse. If just exchanging and um, then of course rook e6 and magnus have the passive position where he actually uh, defends defends the, the b6 and he even cannot come with the with the knight to d6 to attack the the, the bishop and defend the, the knight so quite unpleasant and white would stand better here this is why we have rook e4 now attacking the pawn this pawn is attacked twice already the pawn on h4 is also attacked and here young Krzysztof duda decided okay i don't want this pawn uh, this pawn is now my weakness once i'm rid of it then i'm not gonna have the weakness pretty logical yeah so we have knight d5 the material is equal uh young Krzysztof duda has the three pawns against two pawns on the king side and magnus carlsen have the three pawns against two pawns on the uh, on the queen side we have bishop e3 now uh, and rook d7 so uh, exchanging that would uh, of course not be possible because the rook was hanging so we have rook d7 now and now g3 simply defending the pawn on the h4 uh, we have rook e to e7 so now the knight can move somewhere for example to the to the e3 now uh, the, the rook is not hanging anymore uh, so bishop d4 moving the, uh, the the bishop from the hard harm way and now we have 
have Rook E6. And here, according to the engine, Young Krzysztof Duda should go for the Rook D2. And this is the, the way to draw that game to keep the things equal. So what could happen? Rook E to D6 is the way uh, Magnus Carlsen would love to play. Just focus on this on this bishop, Rook A to D1. And then after Knight B4, let's say, the bishop would uh, probably would have to be moved. Not yet. It's not needed yet. However, after king f1, an attack on the bishop, um, then this bishop would have to be moved, for example, to, to e3. It's better to b3 because here we have some moves like before, obviously not good. And after exchanging everything, we would have uh, probably this end game where um, b5 is played and this knight cannot be attacked by the dark square bishop. Uh, but it's considered as a as a drawing according to the engine, so that was the way to go. However, Jan Krzysztof Duda went for rook a to c1. So what he wants to do, he wants to keep as many pieces as possible on the board, uh, but there is the problem with that. Rook e to d6, so Magnus follows his plan, uh, and now we have rook e1. So avoiding all of that, and now in the next move, move the, the bishop to e3. So once he's exchanged, then the rook can take on e3. And here there is only one winning move for Magnus Carlsen. That was quite an inaccuracy. Uh, and the one winning move for Carlsen, not easy to find. Magnus Carlsen played something else after only 11 seconds of thinking. So he didn't use his 30 minutes. Uh, he just want to put a lot of pressure and he just missed the opportunity. But you have a chance um, to find the winning continuation for black while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So the winning move is king f7. King f7, actually the rook cannot come there with the check. What could happen here is probably bishop c3 and after ex exchanging knight c3, b takes on c3, that's the best what white can get from this position. Uh, the problem is that the black would have a lot of pressure on c3, which has to be protected. Uh, and the problem is that it's not even possible to protect because now the king is coming. Uh, and yes, a white king uh, also can come, but black king gonna be on time on e to e4 and now white are stuck with the rooks and the king uh, and black has a lot of squares to move and uh, can improve the position and white have to uh, have to wait uh, if white even have any moves because you know it's almost the Zugzwang so that would be the problem and uh, Magnus definitely would win that uh, however Magnus went for knight before almost immediately threatening to take the bishop and at the same time threatening uh, to win the exchange however none of this happened because now the king is still on the 8th rank so Jan Krzysztof Duda went with the rook to c8 with the check now we have king f7 but it's too late because now the bishop of course can just calmly move to e3 uh, of course bishop c3 cannot be played still because knight a6 and in the next move the bishop gonna be lost there are there are no ways uh, no squares for bishop to move so this is why of course we had the bishop e3 uh, and now knight d5 going after this bishop we have rook b8 now um, focusing on the b6 square together with the bishop so we have b4 by Magnus Carlsen and now king f1, just bringing the game, uh, the king to the center. We have king g6, so Magnus Carlsen wants to do the same, bring the king. Uh, but now we have g4, creating the wall for the king. We have knight e3, rook e3, so Magnus saying, okay, now I'm gonna win one of your pawns. However, now, very nice move by Jan Krzysztof Duda, and he plays g5, which is a very, very sneaky. It looks like, okay, losing the pawn. However, it's not, because if f takes on g5 is played, then white can play rook b6 with tempo, with the check, and after king h5, just exchange all of that, and, and then rook e5, king f4, rook a5 and this position probably is going to be um, a draw of course if the king comes for example to the to the f3 uh, there are still the rooks which can deliver the checks from uh, from behind so it's not uh, possible there is a little bit you know shaky but it's still very very stable at the same time uh, so this is why we have f5 
and now saying okay and now maybe you want to take this pawn on b6 but now this is not the greatest idea you see the little nuances uh the rook b6 what would happen is king h5 and now this pawn gonna be lost uh, and then this pawn gonna be lost so uh it's a you know huge difference now the rook of course is also attacking h4 so you cannot defend it would give you nothing so this is why a uh, young Krzysztof duda played rook h8 the best move in the position and now we know that magnus carlsen is the specialist in the end games especially the rook end games we know also that most of the rook end games uh, gonna end with the draw however you know against magnus uh, magnus is really good in that um and Jan Krzysztof duda said in the interview that first games which he really like get uh, good skills in chess were the rook end games by akiba rubinstein so that was you know his first idol and akiba rubinstein was one of the grandmasters in the past who never make a single mistake in the pure rook end game so um you know that's a that's the good start if you want to know you know how to play the rook end games what can be done here not much magnus carlsen wants to go to the pure rook end game so he want to exchange the rooks and Jan Krzysztof Duda want to ce centralize the king so why not uh, we have rook e3 we have king e3 and now believe me or not but magnus carlsen committed Threefold repetition and we had a draw in the round a very beautiful game it ended with the draw now could something more happen here if for example Jan Krzysztof Duda goes for this pawn take these three pawns and create the past pawn and win this game probably not but what could happen in this position uh if Jan Krzysztof Duda goes for um, king c4 now first if Magnus is too greedy and goes with the rook to d2 too early tries to of course get these pawns maybe even this pawn uh you know uh, and and create the past pawn on his own the problem is that white can play f4 and now h5 is extremely extremely uh, dangerous so for example rook b2 we're gonna have h5 king f7 and now very strong is g6 and now what would you play here uh, let's say king e7 now rook g8 going after that pawn uh so maybe defended but then rook f8 king e6 just to avoid any uh, any checks try to win uh, the tempo however now h6 is winning and now white gonna win the game but this is of course only one of the lines uh, it's still you know a lot of uh, interesting lines here but what magnus carlsen could do is play rook c7 just a uh, pull the king more to b5 make a decision you're gonna go back or you try to win if um Jan Krzysztof Duda tries to win then very important move first f4 just to you know prevent any f4 moves um, and only now after king b6 go for this uh for this pawn on the f2 so what could happen is king a5 taking the pawn on f2 uh, king b4 rook b2 and now let's say after king c3 the rook can come to h2 going after the pawn on h4 uh, so maybe b4 then f3 uh, rook f8 would be forced on some point f2 uh, and then b5 this pawn is start to run so probably rook h4 then rook f2 just exchanging uh, and at the end we would have these two pawns uh, so this of course would still be the the draw um maybe something like rook f7 going after this pawn uh, there are some some ideas uh, of course that uh, after g6 b6 this rook now should go to the uh, to the h8 or maybe to h1 there are a couple of ideas here of course if the rook goes for for h1 trying to get behind the pawn uh black have to be very careful with some maneuvers like like rook f2 and uh, and rook b2 so probably more safe would be would be here more passive uh but keep in mind that black also has this pawn so that also would be a draw so this is why young Krzysztof duda didn't try to you know make it more risky uh he just draw against the world champion when he had 
in some moment lost position but he found the way this bishop h6 was just beautiful all of this maneuver a bishop d2 bishop g5 and and bishop h6 was very very interesting creating more weaknesses in magnus position and so on so that was the game and i would like to show you also uh, the standing so nils grandelius who drawn against uh, fabiano caruana in a very very complicated position uh fabiano caruana deviates in the third move uh, played some unorthodox opening he knew that nils grandelius is well prepared uh, but that was a draw even the even nils grandelius were in troubles and uh, two winners in this round jordan van forest and alireza firuzia got three and a half points so now we have a uh, six players who have uh, the three and a half points out of six uh, Anish Giri also of course Magnus Carlsen uh, Fabiano Caruana still and Pentala Hare Krishna so uh, Nils Grandelius still on the lead so leading and uh, yeah big surprise of this tournament if you like this video press like if for some reason you don't like it press and like and if you don't want to miss other games in Tata still press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one